Hello aspirants, welcome to Rathod's IAS Academy. Today in this lecture, we are going to see current affairs of 4th March 2022. So let's get started with our discussion and let us try to see today's quote. So today's quote is, every day may not be good, but there is something good in every day. So especially during this long preparation for clearing of this UPSC, so this journey will take like some people who are very talented, they can clear this examination in one year. So but many of aspirants, they will be taking two to five years of time to clear this UPSC. And in this long journey, so in this long days of preparation, so every day may not be good, but there is something good in every day and we have to find that good and we need to motivate ourselves for the next day. So let's get started with our discussion and let us try to see the first topic. First topic it is regarding ethical dilemmas. So I think you already had started this ethics preparation that is GS paper 4 and this ethics paper it is for 250 marks and out of this 250 marks you have to get more than 110 marks. So getting 110 marks it is a good score in ethics. So how can you get good marks in ethics? So you have to analyze recent current affairs and the ethical dimension in that current affairs. And if you're talking about, if you're talking about Ukraine-Russia issue, we can talk about ethical dilemmas also, which are present in that Ukraine-Russia issue. And even we can talk about ethics in international relations. So that topic which is present in our syllabus exclusively. So there we can study about this Russia-Ukraine issue. Right. So if you want to get good marks in ethics, you have to focus on examples and you have to analyze ethics, ethical dimensions or ethical dynamics okay, that are mainly present in the current affairs. Because most of the times you can get the questions from this ethical dilemmas which are present in current affairs. Right. So now let us try to understand this article which mainly talks about find space for new science, its ethical dilemmas. So here you need to understand what is the meaning of ethical dilemmas. So ethical dilemma, it is like a difficult, in a difficult position, you want to take the choice, okay, in the two things, okay, if you have two choices, so in that two choices, it is very much difficult to take a choice, okay, to take a dimension, so that is called as ethical dilemma. So now let us try to understand this ethical dilemma by seeing some examples which are given in this article. So if you are talking about this article, which mainly says that, now, there are many there are elections which are mainly going on in number of states. So in many states, we are seeing elections are going on. So because of this, there is a separate paper, there is assembly poll which is appearing daily. Right? So in this elections time, so we are spending a very little time in focusing and in debating regarding the modern science and their repercussions of public life. Okay, now due to this elections, we are getting a very little time, especially to focus, to discuss, to debate on modern science and technology developments. So if you're talking about science and technology and in this fields, we are coming up with different developments in the recent days. For example, we can talk about Internet of Things, artificial intelligence, etc. And due to this less time that is available now due to this election campaigns and elections in number of states. now. What happened? So these developments in the science and technology had been reported very, very low. And even here, they are mainly quietly fading their relevance in the public view as well. For example, if you're talking about recent implications, we can talk about new ray ban, okay, or we can say like Facebook smart glass or spectacles. And the brand here is uh, stories. So Facebook came up with the smart glasses or smart spectacles. So in this image, you can see these smart spectacles, which is mainly come up by Facebook. And whenever any person who is wearing this spectacle, they will have <clears throat> an opportunity to record the video and even to take the photos of events or any con conversations without permission or knowledge of those who are wearing this. Okay, those who are wears, uh, those who are present before this wearers. So if you're talking about this spectacles, they will be having a small button. So if you're going for pressing of this small button, then the recording will be started and this recording will be last for 30 seconds. And this device, which mainly combines high technology and as well as high fashion as well. So keeping of uh, spectacles, it is like a fashion nowadays. It is a trending also. 
right and with this spectacles which is having this technology of recording option so it is mainly combination of high technology and as well as high fashion so what are the implications for state interference in our privacy so without uh, without the person who is knowing that that person is recorded or the photos are taken then what is the question of the privacy that is right to privacy so this is the one ethical dilemma or we can say like this is one of the concern because of this science and technology and what happened if you are talking about direction of medical sciences so recently this zeno transplantation is very much seen in news so what is a zeno transplantation so we are going for transplantation of organs from one person to another person so here in this case of uh, zeno transplantation we are going for organ transplantation between the two different species for example we are transplanting organs of pig to humans so already we discussed that topic and even in our weekly current affairs also we discussed about that zeno transplantation and what are the ethical dilemmas which are present and a medical team their uh, team there attached a kidney from a zine edited animal to a person and that person actually a brain dead he is in coma mainly uh, they want to see whether that kidney which is functioning or not which is filtering the blood or not and it is producing the urine or not so because of this whether to go for experimental thing whether the kidney which is mainly filtering the blood or processing the waste or producing the urine or not so here medical team they attached a kidney from a gene edited animal to person who is in coma and next one is even even a doctor in germany who is mainly working in area of zeno transplants and they mainly develop a farm to cultivate genetically modified organs for transplant and not only this even what happened uh, even one case in america they transplanted heart of pig to the human and that transplant is successful till now right so if you are talking about moral and social issues which are related to this zeno transplantation so if you are talking about uh, article 51a okay article 51a which mainly talks about fundamental duties and this fundamental duty is also saying that we need to develop scientific temper okay so whenever we want to focus on this type of scientific temper whether we have to ignore this ethical dilemmas or not again this one question which is which can be debatable so if you are talking about in this context whenever we are going for this zeno transplant transplantation of organs from an animal to humans so here animal right activists so animal right movements they mainly objecting that what are the advances that we can see in this medical sciences of zeno transplantation because whenever we are going for this zeno transplantation it mainly ignoring the ignoring the rights of animals okay animals also have the right to life but we are killing that animal and we are taking that organ from that animal and we are transplanting to humans so because of this it mainly ignores the right of animals right to life of animals so because of this there are some movements which are mainly done by this animal right activist and these animal right activists they also argue that they uh, animals also have rights and also it is the humans a moral responsibility to support the rights of animals and if you are talking about one more important philosophy like philosophy of anthropo anthropocentrism so if you are talking about this philosophy of anthropocentrism so we are mainly placing human in center okay we are placing in human in center of nature and all the living creatures they they are mainly valued for mainly that can be used for the humans so in this philosophy of anthropocentrism it mainly says that human will be placed in center and whatever the creatures for example per se animals and even plants which are present around that they will only value okay they will having only value if they can be used to humans so according to this philosophy of anthropocentrism it mainly says that human will be placed at the center and whatever the creatures are present they will be have value only when they are used by this humans such anthropocentric thinking they rightly declare that yes yes we can go for this zeno transplantism transplantation and it is a basis of ecological crisis of climate change okay such anthropocentric thinking they rightly declare that the there has been the basis of ecological crisis of climate change and if you are talking about from the perspective of this animal rights so this animal rights perspective places us on this classic utilitarian dilemma whether we have to kill an animal and save a human being 
or whether we have to save an animal and let the human die so now if you are talking about animal right perspectives and if you are talking about this utilitarian dilemma it mainly says that whether we have to kill this animal or whenever you are killing this animal that can save the human life so if you are saving this animal that will kill the humans so which or uh, which is the action that we have to choose here whether to kill human or whether to kill animal so this is the one utilitarian dilemma that we can say in this xeno transplantation so if you are talking about in our society and if you are talking about second dilemma here we can talk about human rights versus animal rights and we can talk about religion versus religion versus life because in society we will be having a multi Uh, multi-culture society we have different uh, caste people they are living together for example we have muslims so muslims they will consider pig as a dirty animal so eating pork is also considered as disgusting in this muslim community but how but how can this pig uh, pigs organs that can be transplanted for this uh, for this muslim so this is also one taboo that is present here okay so these are the some ethical dilemmas which are given in this article and i th- hope you understand this And now let us try to see next topic. Title says not taking sides. Actually, this topic it is talking about Russia-Ukraine conflict. So here it is mainly talking about India's stand regarding this Russia-Ukraine crisis. So we are talking about stakeholders who are involved in this Russia-Ukraine war. First one it is Russia. Second one is Ukraine. Third one is USA. And fourth one here we can talk about India. And we can talk about China. we can talk about united nations security council you can talk about united nations general assembly and even we can talk about nato as well okay and even we can talk about erstwhile ussr countries and their role in this russia ukraine conflict so these are the stakeholders we can talk so if you are if you want to write any answer that should be like a multi dimensional and even in your essay it should be multi dimensional so first if you are talking if you want to write any answer you have to think who can be involved here so actually you know that in russia and ukraine issue so there is a issue of nato so ukraine if it want to start it if it want to join this nato so russia which is mainly object in that so we can take a dimension regarding this nato and if you are talking about usa usa which is mainly supplying some some humanitarian assistance even weapons to this ukraine and russia which is mainly supporting this ukraine and it want to show its hegemony and if you are talking about india india it is having a neutral because for india us is also important and also russia is also important so because of this india mainly abstain the vote okay till now india abstain vote in three times and if you are talking about china china said we are going to support this russia and if you are talking about united nation security council here russia which is a permanent member p5 member so because of this if there is any resolution that need to be uh, that need to be passed in this united nation security council which is mainly vetoed by this russia so we are having no role of this united nation security council and if you are talking about unga so recently one resolution which is passed in this unga with a high majority of 141 out of this 193 countries so here we can say that so this unga which is having a little power little tooth a little teeth so in this way we can talk about these different areas in this russia ukraine conflict and even we can talk about some map locations as well in which uh, we can see russian separatist groups are present in this eastern ukraine part and we can talk about in which cities russia went for uh, Uh, when for attacks and which cities which are mainly occupied by this russia which is very much near to ukraine and we can talk about economic uh, influence of russia and you can talk about some map locations like black sea sea of ozev dardanelles strait and as well as kerch strait you can talk about bosphorus strait and role of turkey also regarding this controlling of uh, these states like dardanelles strait and bosphorus strait under this montrax convention so you can talk all these issues in this russia ukraine so this will be helpful for your revision part and will be helpful for giving some knowledge to you regarding this russia ukraine to write any answer right and you can also talk about what is the impacts of this russia ukraine on european countries and even india you can talk about gas and as well as a crude oil of this russia okay so now let us try to see this topic in a very great detail so this article which is talking about ukraine war and recently in this united nation security council were resolution passed by usa but it has not been passed because of veto power which mainly enjoying by this russia and even in that resolution india abstained 
right uae india and china they abstain from voting in this united nation security council so we are talking about after this resolution which is not passed here because of veto power of russia so in this united nation general assembly so a resolution regarding this russia's attack on ukraine and also this resolution which mainly demanded immediate withdrawal of russian troops from ukraine which mainly passed with a majority of 141 out of 193 countries so in this united nation general assembly total there are about 193 countries out of this 193 countries 141 countries they mainly are in the favor of this in this withdrawal of russian troops in ukraine so this resolution which was discussed in the rare special emergency session so because of this ongoing russia ukraine conflict they came up with emergency session of this united nation general assembly and they mainly came up with this resolution to come up with peace in this ukraine and if you are talking about this united nation security council resolution which mainly vetoed by russia and russia mainly rejecting the outcome of this political vote of united nation general assembly now so it is mainly saying that these votes are because of pressure of usa nationalist european countries and this pressure of uh, usa nationalist european countries that led to drivers of this resolution which is mainly passed in this united nation general assembly So we are talking about some countries who have mainly voted against this resolution, United Nations General Assembly. Those countries are Belarus, Eritrea, North Korea, and as well as Syria. So these are the four countries which mainly voted against the motion, and about thirty-five countries, including India, they abstained from voting from this resolution in this United Nations General Assembly. So we are talking about this resolution. Also declared that Russian decision to recognize Donetsk and Luhansk. they are independent states actually these areas that is donetsk and luhansk so in these areas are mainly dominated by this russian based separatist groups so earlier it was autonomous region and now russia declared them as independent states so whenever russia it is declared as independent states what is this inference so if there is any attack which is happening between this ukraine and this luhansk so russia can directly involve in this issue right so because of this russia which mainly recognized this areas donetsk and as well as luhansk as independent states right so this is one important thing and this resolution also says that so this donetsk and luhansk they should not be the independent states as declared by the russia so if you are talking about india's position so india's abstention uh, not a surprise here because it also disappointed some many western countries because we are growing a relationship between the western countries nowadays and we are having good relationship growing good relationship between india and usa and even some other countries so because of this abstaining from the voting regarding this russia ukraine issue so many countries they are mainly upset by this india's position india situation and the past week india also had abstained from this united nation security council resolution as well not only this unsc resolution even in human rights council and also iaea resolution so in these three important situations india mainly abstain from this voting so india also sent even humanitarian assistance to ukraine although we are having a vote of abstention so it mainly indicated that our government of india still have many reasons not to vote against india because russia it is one of the strategic defense partner of india and we are having a good relationship with india with russia india and russia we are having good relations and even in 1971 india pakistan war so the country which mainly supported india is russia but not usa so because of this we are having a good friendly relationship with russia so we are not moving forward to vote against this russia here and author says that if this conflict which mainly continues and the global community which mainly expresses its disapproval india's desire to remain an abstentionist power is being uh, called to a question so if if you are talking about this russia ukraine crisis from 9 days onwards from 9 to 10 days onwards we are seeing this war like situations and in this situation we came with akash ganga or operation ganga especially to evacuate standard students standard medical students in ukraine and we are sending many uh, air aeroplanes from air india and even we sent uh, 
this military aeroplanes like C-19 aeroplanes especially to evacuate the students from this Ukraine. And not only Indians but also Pakistan people, Pakistan students, they are also using Indian flags to come out of that Ukraine. So this is one news I found in some news channel actually. And government also had said that it needs to remain on good terms with the both the sides and it is mainly focusing on safe exit of Indian students from this conflict zone. And even one student name, uh, name is Naveen who lost his life uh, during these attacks, right? And if you're talking about the conclusion, author mainly says that, so we are mainly focusing on evacuating of Indians from this conflict area. And it cannot be India's only focus in the crisis. And actually, you know that we are mainly following this Vasudeva Kutumbakam. So Vasudeva Kutumbakam, it is a one phrase that is seen in our ancient text, which mainly says that the world is one family. Right. So here we need to engage more deeply with the conflict in this Europe region. And as it is one of the now global concerns, India need to change its stand. So this is about this topic. And now let us try to see next topic. It is regarding care informed by data. So actually this article which is mainly talking about rehabilitation of children who are orphaned by pandemic. So here you need to know about what is the meaning of orphanhood. And here we can talk about PM cares for children. So you have to revise that topic because we discussed number of times that topic uh, in our earlier Hindu analysis. So it is a time to revise that PM cares for children. So let me know some points whatever you can recall from your database that is your from your brain regarding this PM cares for children and recently I think one uh, 10 to 15 days ago also we discussed this topic. And now let us try to see this topic. So this is important from our governance point of view which mainly comes in a GS paper too. So if you see recently one Lancet report, okay, Lancet report released regarding COVID-19 associated orphanhood and this recent Lancet estimate says that about 19 lakh children they were orphaned due to this COVID-19, okay. So due to this COVID-19 pandemic about 19 lakh children they were orphaned and this Lancet study generated the numbers based on modeling and therefore the only estimates and not actual numbers are available. So it is mainly done on modeling. So because of this actual numbers they are not available. So it is like only estimates that we can see. But if you see globally, globally it estimated that about 52 lakh children they lost their parents during this pandemic. So if we are talking about what is the definition of this orphanhood. So orphanhood was defined as death of one or both parents. So it is a death of one or both parents or even death of uh, both custodial grandparents and these people or these children they will come under this orphanhood. So as per the data which mainly collected by National Commission for Protection of Child Rights and even Bal Swaraj portal it mainly says that in India about 1.53 lakh children they were orphaned due to this COVID-19 pandemic. And here because of this large number of children who are orphaned, so now here we have an urgent importance that is we need to take absolute urgency that government need to incorporate child care into this COVID-19 management program. So in this COVID-19 management program, government need to include this child care as well. So state that is government of India, they need to draw that such children who lost their parents and they need to save their life from adversities like poverty, violence, destitution, lack of access to education, health care. So it is the responsibility of government to take care of these children who are offered because of this COVID-19 pandemic. And Indian government to its credit also announced a grand plan for supporting of these children who are forced to orphanhood by this COVID-19. And many states they also came up with number of states, uh, number of steps like rehabilitation plans and they are going for adoption, foster care, education, health care. So if we are talking about education, uh, adoption, we can talk about CARA, C-A-R-A, C-A-R-A which mainly deals with adoption. So you have to also revise about this CARA as well. And it is a time to update uh, status of programs to mainly came up by government of India, especially to support these orphans. And even it need to provide proper information regarding the number of cases where intervention has occurred and in, in how many cases there is a pending that is mainly seen. So in these ways government need to go for updation and it need to come up with much more schemes that mainly helpful for these children. 
so this is just of this topic and i hope it is very much clear so why government need to take some steps because these are the children they can traffic and they will also in, enter into some adversities like poverty and they can go for doing of crimes and if there is no proper lack of education so what happen that will be having impact on their future life so because of this it is responsibility of government to take care of this orphans and now let's try to say next topic it is ford meets amid tensions over ukraine so this article which is mainly talking about what so this article it is important from international relations which mainly comes under gs paper 2 so now let us try to see this topic in a very great detail so if you see context it mainly says that prime minister and leaders of japan australia they mainly took part in sudden convened squad summit so actually us hosted this squad summit so in this squad summit uh, india japan australia and us they participated okay so why it is a surprise because if you see us which mainly passed the resolution in united nations security council but this resolution which mainly abstained by us but japan and australia they supported us on one side india didn't support this us so it is a one surprise for india and india also joined the squad summit which mainly hosted by us So in this summit, they mainly talked about humanitarian assistance in this Indo-Pacific region, and also talked about what will be the impact of this uh, uh, Ukraine crisis on this region as well. So if you see some important details of this summit, it mainly says that meeting came amid deep divisions within the Quad grouping, as India has chosen to abstain from every vote at the United Nations, United Nations, and even. other organizations which mainly criticized the russian attacks on ukraine in the past week so us japan australia they have been calling for the tough line on moscow and even the number of countries they went for increasing of sanctions on this russia as well right but india mainly abstained but if you see india provided some humanitarian assistance for the ukraine right so we talk about quad these are the leaders of our quad right so it mainly includes india here australia Japan and USA. So this is the quad. So you can draw this type of diagram to represent quad in your means answers, such that you can you can attract examiner. So we are talking about some facts regarding this quad. It mainly stands for Quadrilateral Security Dialogue. It mainly includes four countries like Japan, India, US, and Australia. It includes Japan, India, US, and Australia, and all four nations which mainly find a common ground for being democratic nations. and common interest on unhindered maritime trade and security so actually these four countries they will find a common ground of being democratic nations and they are having the common interest in this indo pacific region they want to ensure free trade and as well as freedom of navigation and even security peace in this indo pacific region and these grouping which mainly trace its genesis to 2004 so in this 2004 the four countries they came together especially to coordinate relief operations after math of tsunami in 2004 the great tsunami which mainly hit and due to this uh, tsunami so even southern most point of india that is indra point that mainly submerged in the water as well okay so in this after the tsunami here these countries they came forward and they mainly came up for the coordinating of relief operations here and it then met for the first time in 2007 on the sidelines of this asian summit that is association of southeast asian Con nations and is to one is the intention was to enhance maritime cooperation between these four nations and if you are talking about significance of this grouping so quad which is mainly providing an opportunity for like minded countries okay so they are mainly providing uh, an opportunity for these like minded countries and they will going for sharing of notes and they will come up with collaboration on the project of mutual interest and they will also share the vision of open and free indo pacific region right and they want to promote uh, maritime domain awareness and they want to focus on maritime security etc okay so these are the significance of this quad and now let us try to see this image and i found this image in the paper one and this is a very very important from your art and culture point of view so actually it is a fire dance which is mainly seen in kerala especially in one festival okay it is also called as god dance that is theyam t h e y y a m 
Tayam, it is a folk dance that is mainly seen in the state of Kerala. So if you are opening your NCRT and NCRT of 11th class or even in your Nitin Singhania, you will be seeing a separate chapter of these dances. There you can see classical dances and you can see this folk dances. In classical dances, you will be talking about eight dances like Bharatanatyam, Kuchipudi, Moiniyattam, okay, Satriya dance. And these are the eight classical dances that are seen. And in the folk dances, you can see number of folk dances. So in that folk dances, one of the dance here is Tayyam. Okay, so this Tayyam is also known as God's dance. If you are talking about the background of this dance, so it is one of the ritualistic art form in ancient, ancient times which is mainly organized uh, by this Hinduism and uh, it is also having some back to a type of uh, tribal animism. So if you're talking about animism, so this animism philosophy that you can see in your anthropology, if you're from an anthropology background or if you are from anthropology uh, optional student, so you might be knowing about this word animism. So what is this animism, right? And if you're talking about reg region, so where it is celebrated in Kerala, so it is mainly originated in northern uh, part of Kerala and it will be celebrated from December till April and this uh, Theyam performances are mainly seen in the temples of uh, Kannur and as well as Kasargod area and these Theyam which is mainly performed annually and will also draw huge crowds and if you are talking about objective of this Theyam so it is mainly performed to appease the spirits of ancestors and even folk heroes and dancer mainly represents the local gods and goddesses who believe to be the protectors of the village and if you're talking about one important feature it it includes a music a mime and as well as a dances and this ceremonious dance which mainly used uh, or the sound the music will be created by using some local musical instruments like chenda elatalam kurumuzai and as well as a virku chenda so these are the some musical instruments that mainly used for the dance in this uh, in this theyam and one important key feature is mudi. Mudi it is like a sacred crown and that crown which is mainly made up of coconut or arcanut splices and it mainly ranges from one feet till a height of coconut tree. So this is one attracting feature of this tayam. And there are about 400 separate tayams are there and each will have their separate music style and separate choreography as well. Okay. And the prominent one is Ratha Chamundi, Kari Chamundi, Muchilotu Bhagwati. Vainadu, Kulavin, Gulikan, Bhutan. So these are the some prominent themes. Okay. So now let us try to see next topic. It is regarding all projects in tune with industry T. So here you need to know about some facts regarding this industry war and as well as industry T. So if I am not wrong, in 2021 prelims there was one question regarding this industry. So which rivers come and joins which river? And you have to see the geography. Okay, through maps as well for regarding this industry team. So, because in 2021 there was one question which appeared in prelims. And now let us try to see this topic. So, this topic it is important from international relations, and even we can consider this topic from our geography point of view as well. So, if you see context, it mainly says that India and Pakistan they have discussed the exchange of hydrological and flood data. So, India and Pakistan they have discussed regarding exchange of hydrological data and as well as flood data at a meeting of permanent Indus commission. So in the meeting of this permanent Indus commission, they exchanged the data regarding this hydrological and flood data of this rivers. So now let us try to see some details. So during this 117th meeting of this permanent Indus commission, which mainly includes like in Indus commissioners of India and as well as Pakistan, so this meet which mainly held between March 1st to March 3rd in Islamabad and in this meet from the both the side they discussed the issue of this Fazilka drain and even they discussed about what should be the action of plan that should be taken. Okay, so this is the thing which mainly said by Ministry of External Affairs and the technical discussions they were also regarding some ongoing projects across this industry sewer system like Pakuldal, Kiru and as well as Lower Kainai. So actually there was one question which appeared regarding this Indus Water Treaty that is it is argued that a review of Indus Water Treaty could prove to be double edged sword for India discuss why. So please try to write an answer for this question and please let me know your answer and your comments regarding this question in the comment box. So now let us have a look over this Indus River system. 
So if you see this area, so actually this area which is mainly under control of China. So here we can see LAC is present and here this part which is this area which is ceded by the Pakistan to China. And here if you see this area, this area which mainly comes under this park occupied Kashmir. And here we can see LOC that is present that is line of control. So here across India and China we have this line of actual control and across this uh, India and Pakistan we have this line of control that is LOC. Don't confuse with this LAC and LOC. And here we have this river, this is industry river which is mainly flowing in India and entering into, in, into Pakistan. And here we have some uh, small tributaries which is coming and which is joined there or called as Khyber. Okay, Khyber and another river which mainly coming in which is mainly joining this industry river and here if you see here this is a Jhelum river and here we have this uh, river it is a Chinab river and here a local box as you can see here we have Ravi river here we have Bias this is Bias and this is Sutledge river so these are the six rivers which mainly comes under the part of this industry river system so finally they will be draining into Arabian sea right so if we are talking about some facts regarding this Indus uh, treaty so actually in this Indus river system we are having Indus, Chinab, Jhelum, Ravi, Bias and Sutlej. So these are the six rivers. They are mainly flowing between India and Pakistan and actually the rivers water sharing of these six rivers which is mainly governed by a treaty. Okay treaty. So this treaty which mainly signed in 1960 the name of that is Indus water treaty. Right under this treaty actually this uh, treaty which mainly brokered by World Bank. And under this treaty, India will be controlling uh, rivers that is BRS, Bias, Ravian Satellite, and Pakistan will be controlled ICJ, India, Chin, uh, Indus, and Chinab, Jila. So ICJ will be the code for Pakistan. BRS, these are the rivers which mainly governed by India. So as per treaty, the Water Commission of Pakistan and India they are required to meet twice a year. Okay, they have to meet at twice a year. And they didn't arrange technical visits to projects and as well as sites and critical rivers, headworks, etc. And treaty which also sets out the mechanism for cooperation and information exchange between the two countries regarding how they are using this river waters. So this is about this Indus Treaty. And now let us try to see the yesterday's questions. So first question is environment protection. It is an inherent part of Indian constitution. So which of the following are mainly mentioned about this? Environment protections. First one is fundamental duties. Yes, of course. And DPSP. Yes. And even preamble also talks about this and fundamental rights. So yes, one, two, three, four, all of them, which mainly talks about environment protection. And next one is flexible mechanisms under this Kyoto Protocol includes carbon sink. Yes, it is mainly talking about carbon sink. Second one is joint implementation, emission trading. And even this clean development mechanism. Actually, this uh, carbon sink which is mainly talked in this clean development mechanism. So here, this clean development mechanism indirectly also talking about this Kyoto Protocol. So correct answer will be three, one, two, three, and four. And let us have a look over the today's questions. So first question is about POP is persistent organic pollution. So here you have to identify which of the following international measures including this POP. So this is a very very important topic and please try to give your answer. And next one is regarding so in air quality index which are the chief pollutants are included. So actually there are eight important things. So let me know which are these included in this air quality index. Okay so these are the today's questions and try to give your answers in the comment box. Don't forget about this. So there is no negative marking as well. You can give your answers. So before concluding, I want to make a small announcement on this platform. So we launched this mains answer writing practice and this course is exclusively beneficial to improve your answer writing skills. So it will be helpful to come out of your fear regarding this mains answer writing. And if you have any problem regarding how to write an answer and how to improve your answer writing skills. So if you join this course for 100 sure I can give you assurance like you are going to you are going to rock this answer writing skills. Okay, you are going to have a good answer in skills and finally you will be getting a good score in your mains answer. Okay, in your mains examination. So this course which is a one year course, one year long course which includes weekly targets. You are giving you weekly targets of three to four chapters and based on that daily one question will be given to you. And if you send that question to our email ID then we will be evaluating your answers and we also providing you detailed detailed feedback 
and we also give you the modal answer and we also provide you one to one mentorship so in this way this course is exclusively beneficial for the students even though if you are a beginner and or even though you have gave your attempts and you are weak in your this means okay so this course it is very very useful to try to use this opportunity already this course had been started from march 1st and registrations will be closed by march 10 so if you want to join this course please ensure by the march 10 you are going to join this course and if you want to talk to me regarding this course you can call to this number 8074765513 and the academic director of this rathor science academy and you can talk to me on this number and we are also launching pen drive courses especially the students who are from remote areas they do not have proper internet services so because of this we are also launching this uh, pen drive courses a full foundation course for 2023 and there will be the each and every topic which is present in your syllabus will be covered and we are providing you the conceptual clarity for sure and we are discussing previous prelims questions mains questions right so this course will be absolutely beneficial so please take this pen drive courses also so if you don't want entire foundation course if you want to get a single module or single subjects like economy history geography that will be also available you can take the single module of this pen drive course as well so if you have any doubts you can call on this number and if you want to join these courses on our website so you can visit our website and there you can register with your email id and you can go for payment there and one more thing here is if you want to get this pdf of this uh, lecture so you can join the telegram channel and in that telegram channel we are providing this pdf diary okay so by this i'm concluding i hope you enjoyed this lecture please subscribe to rathore sai academy and don't forget to like share and comment my videos thank you so much